Magnets gave us all a few kicks back in the day. Now you get to learn the thrilling physics that makes them work. First, why is the title of this section Electromagnetism? This name suggests that electricity and magnets are connected. In fact, there is a very strong connection between them. Whenever we have a current, you know, a flow of electrons, then we have a magnetic field. It's a strange idea that electricity produces a magnetic field, but the world is a strange place. We use arrows to describe the direction of magnetic fields. On paper, it's easy to draw a magnetic field that's pointing up or down or left or right, but how do we show that a field is moving towards us or away from us? We use arrows to show a magnetic field just like we did with electric fields. Imagine that someone has just fired an arrow towards you. Before you duck, what would you see? Probably you would only notice the small tip of the arrow. So we draw dots to show a magnetic field that's moving towards us. The name for this direction is out of the page, but it might help for you to think of it as into the face instead, because that's basically where the arrow is heading. Now what about if it was you who had fired the arrows into your nemesis? Well in that case, you would be looking at the back of the arrow, which would be a feathered cross shape. We call magnetic fields in this direction into the page, since they're moving away from us. As you can see, we generally space magnetic field lines evenly, once again in just the same way as we did with electric fields. So a few minutes ago we said that a magnetic field would happen whenever we had a current. Currents most often are found flowing through wires. When a current flows through a wire, we get a special kind of curved magnetic field. We can use our right hand to determine what direction the magnetic field is going to be pointing it. The right hand rule works like this. You clench your forefingers in tightly on your right hand, and you stick your thumb in the direction that the current is flowing in. Pretend that you're holding the wire itself. Your fingers will then point in the direction of the magnetic field. Instead of being a simple straight line, you should be able to see that the magnetic field will act in circles around the wire. We've already seen how a charged particle, let's say a proton or an electron, will experience a force when dropped into an electric field. It works in a similar way with magnetic fields. There's a second rule, which is called the right hand slap rule, that determines the direction of the force on that charged particle. Here's how that rule works. So like with the regular right hand rule, your thumb points in the direction of the current that's flowing. And like last time, your fingers will indicate the direction of the magnetic field. The slap comes from your palm. It's pretty violent. Whatever direction your open palm points in, that'll be the direction that the charge is pushed in. Keep in mind that this rule works only for positive charges like protons. If the charge instead were negative, then we simply modify it slightly. Now the back of your hand shows where the negative charge, like an electron, would be pushed. We can use the rule to show how charges are deflected in magnetic fields. In the diagram below, we've got a negative and positive charge. They're both moving up, and they're both inside a magnetic field that's pointing into the page. Use the right hand rule and you should be able to prove that the positive charge is forced to the left, and the negative charge is forced to the right. The force isn't strong enough to change their direction entirely, it simply gradually pushes them towards the left, or towards the right. There's also a formula we can use to determine how big the force on the charge will be. F equals BQV, where B is the size of the magnetic field, which is measured in Teslas, something you haven't seen before. Q is the size of the charge, and V is the velocity of the charge. Never confuse V, velocity, with capital V, voltage. So let's say we've got a positive charge of 0.25 coulombs traveling at a speed of 5 meters per second through a magnetic field of 0.1 teslas. We stick these three numbers into the formula. F equals 0.1 times 0.25 times 5, which is equal to 0.125 newtons. At the moment, the main thing you know about magnetic fields is this. They get created whenever current flows through a wire. Now we teach you a second tantalizing fact about them. Magnetic fields interact with other magnetic fields. This shouldn't come as much of a surprise, because you've already seen this happen with electric fields. Charges dropped inside electric fields, right? We can see this in action when we place a current carrying conductor, a wire maybe, in a magnetic field. We use this handy formula to help us out with our calculations. F equals B I L, where F is the force exerted on the conductor, B is the magnetic field strength, I is the current in the conductor in amps, and L is simply the length of the conductor.
in meters. So you can see that more force will be applied to the conductor whenever the magnetic field gets made stronger by adding more magnets, the current gets increased by using a stronger battery, or the length of the conductor gets increased. And all of this should roughly make sense. The idea that magnetic fields apply forces on other magnetic fields and that a current conductor gets a force applied to it inside a magnetic field aren't particularly interesting ideas because they basically make perfect sense. Now though we extend this notion and we come up with a horrifying and exciting idea that you will have not seen coming. We can get electricity to flow simply by placing a wire in a magnetic field. It sounds crazy and maybe too fantastic to be true, but it is true. Just think about it. We already know that if we stick a wire that's got some current inside it into a magnetic field, it gets a force applied to it. Well, that force can cause electrons that weren't moving before to start moving. And the flow of electrons is another way of saying electricity. When we do this, we're essentially inducing a voltage because we're getting current to flow through the wire. It makes us feel like gods. We can figure out what direction the induced current will flow in using another slight variation of the right hand rule. This ought to make some kind of sense. The force is the thing that pushes the charge inside the wire and gets the current flowing. The main thing that's changed is that your thumb now points in the direction that you're moving the wire in. Formula time. We can use this equation, which is similar to all those other ones that came before it, to calculate the size of the voltage that we created. Voltage equals the magnetic field strength times the velocity times the length. We move a wire that's 0.1 meters long. Inside a magnetic field that has a strength of two teslas at a speed of 0.5 meter per second, we can use our fantastic calculating skills to work out the size of the voltage we'd end up with. Voltage equals 2 times 0.5 times 0.1 equals 0.1 volts. And there we have it. Remember, electric currents produce magnetic fields. The direction of the magnetic field can be found using the right hand rule. The direction of the magnetic force can be found using the right hand slap rule. Magnetic fields can produce an electric current.